With the new Call of the Wild, the Angler currently out on PC for the past few weeks, a lot of PC players have had the opportunity to try out this new modern fishing experience from the makers of the beloved The Hunter games. That's why today I thought it would be helpful for me to create a compare and contrast video on six topics from the three leading fishing games on the market today. Russian Fishing 4, Fishing Planet, and the new Call of the Wild the Angler. So pack your tackle boxes, hit the like button, and let's get into it everyone. Alright, the six topics we're going to be covering today are fishing locations, finding fish, fish species, fishing methods, gear comparison, as well as money and progress. There's a timetable down below if you feel like skipping around, but let's get started with fishing locations. In Fishing Planet, you have just nearly a location to represent fishing areas from all over the world. If you're a fan of River Monsters the TV show, you may enjoy working your way to angling all throughout North America and Europe, South America, and Africa. Now, many may not know this, but Russian Fishing 4 is actually published by a company here in the US, with a development team from all over the world. Understandably by the title though, Russian Fishing tackles the many different fishing opportunities in the giant country of Russia. With over 16 different destinations to choose from, you can choose anywhere between a calm village creek to a carp lake with rentable ATVs, deep lakes with water as far as the eye can see, or an island with rushing salmon water only accessible by a helicopter. And these are just a few examples. With the new Call of the Wild the Angler, our first available fishing location is Golden Ridge Reserve. With towering mountains and dozens of creeks, rivers, ponds, and lakes to fish in this literal 16 by 16 kilometer fishing era, you are sure to find your favorite locations all while exploring this beautiful scenery by foot or by vehicle, whether that be by car or boat, by yourself or with friends. And if history has taught us anything, this will be the first of many reserves coming to the Call of the Wild the Angler, as EW has in the past added more reserves with new species after the game's release. Alright, next up is finding fish. This is how the game determines what fish you are going to catch while fishing. In Fishing Planet, the fish spawn in and bite your lure based on the time of day, location you are casting, your lure or bait selection, and your retrieval type as well as your ability to physically repeat that retrieve. The size of the fish that spawns in depends on how you combine all of these aspects together, resulting in a young, common, trophy, or unique fish size. This method creates a fun fishing experience that is easy to repeat, however many have said that its repetitive nature feels a bit like a grind. Russian Fishing 4 takes Fishing Planet to the next level, using all of the same aspects but combining it with the RPG feature of leveling up your character's skills to perform better with certain lures or baits. Say you enjoy using spinners while fishing. When your character levels up, you can level up your ability to use spinners, and now your lure looks that much more tasty to a big fish spawning in to possibly get hooked. You can also follow along on the Russian Fishing Discord or forum to keep up to date on the best locations where fish are biting every week. Week. In Call of the Wild the Angler, fish initially spawn into the map as you enter the server. Each player has their own server with their own fish, even in multiplayer. Fish locations are based on elevation, water type, time of day, and vegetation, just to name a few. As you're traveling around, you may see fish in ponds, rivers, and lakes, moving around just like in real life, which can give you a good idea of where to cast. However, some reviews have mentioned that the fish stay up towards the top of the water too often, which can make the game feel a bit archaic like. Alright, let's talk fish species. Currently, Call of the Wild the Angler has 12 species of fish available in its first United States location, hitting on multiple bass and trout species. Fish models look fairly realistic in this artistic style the Call of the Wild games are known for, with light reflections reacting differently to a fish with scales or a scaleless fish, and some variation in pattern and scale depending on size. Many of the critics of the game have mentioned that 12 species of fish seems low for a 16 by 16 
1.9 kilometer map, but if the history of Call of the Wild games tell us anything, this will be the first of what could potentially be more than 12 reserves in the game. With varying populations of fish and avoiding overlap, this could place it in the running with Russian fishing and Fishing Planet's number of current fish game species in the next few years. In Fishing Planet, you have over 178 different fish species spread out amongst the 24 different fishing locations. If there's anything Fishing Planet has going for it at the moment, it is the variety of fish worldwide. You can fish for largemouth bass in the Everglades, jumping tarpon in Blue Crab Island, arapaima in South America, or goliath tigerfish in Africa. With enough hard work, any of these fish can be fished for at your leisure. Most fish models in the game show fairly good detail with a few standouts, though in some cases when the fish get to a certain scale, there is a loss in quality. In Russian Fishing 4, you have an impressive 154 different fish and aquatic species to target in 16 different fishing areas, all with multiple models to accurately depict the size of the fish rendered with impressive detail. If you enjoy angling impressive carp, check out the 20 different carp varieties in the game. And if a monster is what you're after, try chasing down one of the 11 different sturgeon or a giant Wells catfish. All in all, while Russian fishing may not have the opportunities worldwide, it clearly has the edge in a European fishing experience. Now let's talk fishing methods. Fishing Planet and Russian Fishing both share fairly similar fishing methods, allowing for spinning and casting reels and rods for use with lures as well as bottom rods, telescopic float rods, and match rods. However, in Russian Fishing you also have the ability to troll lures behind with your boat, which offers more flexibility when fishing in large bodies of water. And speaking of flexibility, Russian Fishing also provides you with multiple carp rig options with enough customization for you to fish just how you would in real life. One other fun detail in Russian Fishing is the ability to create your own bait. Whether it's from the grocery store, a hole in the ground, or turning a fish you caught into live or cut bait, with the right skills you can create the bait you need to get the job done. I think it's this realism where Russian Fishing 4 really thrives. In terms of simulation, to me, this game is the clear leader, offering realistic fights with fish, sometimes forcing you to follow the fish downstream, actively changing drag during the fight, and using proper angling to techniques to land a trophy fish. At the moment, Call of the Wild the Angler features spinning and bait casting with lures, as well as float fishing. Many critics were upset to not see bottom fishing featured in the game on release, however, I for one do not think it will be long before we see bottom fishing in the game. Targeting and fighting fish in the Angler has also been criticized based on its arcade-like strike indicator, as well as its lures seeming to have too much overlap with too many species of fish. There also seems to be no mechanics for lure color in terms of water clarity and weather. While fighting, rods and reels seem to have a very narrow sweet spot for targeting a fish. Many people have reviewed fighting fish as either too easy or nearly impossible, with very little in between. Looking at the number of gear in each game, it's clear that there are two main leaders which at this point isn't so much a surprise. Fishing Planet and Russian Fishing have been around for much longer than Call of the Wild the Angler and have a lot more gear to choose from. Where Russian Fishing 4 diverts in similarity from Fishing Planet is in its trolling gear as well as its gear for extra activities outside of fishing. Your character in Russian Fishing requires food to keep its energy up. This gives importance to the frying pan and cooking pot to be used with the cooking skill tree, where you can learn to cook more nutritious meals or better recipes to keep your energy high while not being too full. You can also learn lure crafting and bait creation with different knives, shovels, and lure molds, where you can create your own lures with specific colors and hooks, or dig for worms and create baits from the aquatic creatures you catch in the game. You can also purchase a net to make it easier to bring in those large fish, and each piece of equipment was modeled with flawless detail with the option to check out each individual item in the menu before purchase. At this point in time, Call of the Wild the Angler features a fair amount of rods, reels, and tackle for the base game of an ongoing series. Though it is good to note that if the future of the Angler is meant to be anything like the Hunter, brands in this game will most likely stay fictional. But Russian 
Ocean Fishing is a good example of how fictional fishing brands can still result in a large amount of tackle and equipment options. One thing to note about the current state of Call of the Wild's gear is how fast players have been able to progress to what is currently end game gear. With there only being one reserve, it's fairly easy at this point to purchase all the essential gear in the game, not leaving much room for further progress, even with future DLC. And speaking of progress, let's talk about money and experience gain in these three games. The new Call of the Wild the Angler is designed to grant you money every time you level up, to purchase new gear or decorative items for your character, car, or boat. Upon release on PC, this wasn't necessarily the case, which allowed players to progress through the game much faster than originally anticipated. But it won't be long before this is updated to be as designed. To level up, you can complete missions, find invasive plant species and places of interest for the warden, and of course catch fish. Larger fish grant larger amounts of experience, so always remember to upgrade your gear and explore new locations. At the moment, the only way to share your fish is a limited screenshot option with your fish score and one view without the score, but with an immovable camera. There is currently no in-game leaderboard or taxidermy option. Many critics of Fishing Planet describe the progression through the game as grindy due to the amount of fish players are forced to catch in order to gain enough XP and money to move on to another fishing area. If you watch our Fishing Planet Beginner Series 2, you'll see that there seems to be a fairly clear path the developers have laid out to progress quicker through the game by catching the same fish species. However, many feel like this repetitive fishing combined with the cost of travel and license fees ruin the game. Fishing locations and gear are unlocked by level, so unless you are able to keep Progressing to level 58, for example, you won't be fishing anywhere in South America or Africa. It should also be noted that Fishing Planet teamed up with the publishers Nacon and Big Ben Interactive to create The Fisherman, which was meant to be a one-time purchase version of Fishing Planet with cheaper travel costs and license fees, as well as a new fishing location and the trolling fishing method. However, this game was quickly abandoned and has no new content beyond Blue Crab Island, released back in September of 2020. The main payoff in Fishing Planet is saving screenshots of the fish. There is an in-game leaderboard and competitions within the game, however, the leaderboard is regularly reset. Money and experience is gained similarly in Russian fishing, however, as an option to make more money from your fish, you can complete daily cafe orders by fishing location, which can give you a boost to your daily income, as well as give you goals to work towards during your time fishing. And this is where the game really excels in my opinion. Instead of being a grind for the same fish over and over again, you progress in level by catching a variety of fish in different locations at the same time, which is improving your character as an angler. And by improving your character, I mean literally taking the experience you gain and applying it to the many different skill trees in the game to build your angler to better fish with the methods you enjoy fishing. Enjoy fishing with lures? Level up your character to use lures better. Love fishing for carp or making your own ground bait? They have skills to improve in those areas too. I think as a longtime fan of RPGs such as Fallout and Elder Scrolls, this skill progression gets me so excited to see in a fishing game. And beyond screenshots, if you like your catch, take it to the next level by mounting it with the taxidermy shop to display in your in-game home. So there you go, comparing and contrasting six topics from the three leading fishing games on the market today. But before we end this video, I want to have one last bonus topic, and that is price. All three of these games have great features, but how much are you willing to pay? Both Fishing Planet and Russian Fishing 4 are free to play games with premium passes available, but the premium passes do differ depending upon the game. In Russian Fishing, which I should mention is only for PC, you can purchase a premium pass for a few days, weeks, months, a year, or unlimited, which allows you increased experience gain per fish, plus an hour-long bonus every day when you start fishing. Russian Fishing also offers gold coins, which can be exchanged with your money to help you purchase specific in-game items you want. Picture them kind of like tokens in an arcade. They can be extremely helpful if you want a new rod and reel combo, but only have enough money in the game for the reel. Throw in a couple bucks of tokens and you can purchase your rod, all while only having spent a few bucks in the game. In Fishing Planet, which is available on PC and console, you can buy the premium package for a few days, weeks, months, or by the year for increased money and experience gain. 
plus decrease wait times during time changes. I always recommend players who are considering purchasing Premium Fishing Planet to wait until Black Friday, when premium prices are 50% off. This will allow you a year of increased experience and money for only 30 US dollars. Fishing Planet also offers a number of DLCs, but as many of you know, I frequently speak against purchasing them as they are packages that are usually expensive, give you gear that you can for the most part earn freely in the game, as well as in some cases give you access to maps which would be considered end game in Fishing Planet. There are all too many people who have told me they purchased a $40 DLC to fish in Africa for a month, then found the game boring afterwards and stopped playing. My recommendation is to avoid the DLCs and purchase premium if you're looking to make the game progress faster, all while experiencing the game the way it was meant to be played. Call of the Wild the Angler at the time of this recording is currently available on PC for $29.99 and it won't be long before we see it on consoles as well. Based on historical pricing, future DLCs for the fishing game will be priced at $7.99 for new reserves and $3.99 for additional gear. And with that, I think we'll call this compare and contrast video a wrap everyone. 6 plus a bonus topic comparing in 3 main leading fishing titles on the market today. Honorable mentions should be Fisher Online and Ultimate Fishing Simulator 1 and 2, but I didn't want to make this video any longer. But feel free to comment down below if you'd like me to do more comparisons in the future. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button as it really helps us out, and subscribe to the channel for more fishing videos in the future. If you want to join us for our live streams every Monday, Wednesday, 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central, make sure you do so. It's always a ton of fun seeing everyone every night and I really appreciate you all taking time out of your day to spend it with me doing a little bit of fishing. So until the next video everyone, take care and as always, remember everyone, we're one planet, one family, game on.